Good after you, afternoon YouTubers. Um, this afternoon um, I was supposed to be going to photograph some ladies rugby but because of the snowy conditions and all the rest of it and the state of the pitch um, the match has been called off. So instead what I hope to do is to make some homemade cereal bars. Uh, this video was inspired by um, Tina Brindley. Um, Tina did a video on making these cereal bars. I think she also did cake, I seem to remember as well. And I'll put the link below in the comments. So we're going to start off with, got my food, food, press, food processor here. We're going to start off with um, some salted peanuts. And we're going to put in, well, I'm going to go, because I haven't really got, probably the right size baking trays to be honest, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for, one cup of salty peanuts. Maybe mm. let's go for two, it's pretty old. One end of that's about one and two thirds cup of salted peanut, ready salted peanut. Right. Then we are going to put in the processor some uh, granola. This is just the, the ordinary stuff from Tesco's. where they all already come with fruit and didn't know what else is them. Mm, well, I'm going to need to get the scissors otherwise we'll have it all over the floor. We don't want that, do we? Right. So, we are going to go for, I think, mm, quite lumpy these bits. Go for a similar sort of amount of granola, which is one, there's one cup. And what do you say we did peanuts? One and two thirds ish, wasn't it? So we'll go for that as well. Similar amount of granola. A bit more. So you can have those bits later on. Right. So so suddenly you can go and that can, that can go in the bean. Right. <coughs> Just to keep the chef happy, we're having a drop of old speckled hen this afternoon. Uh, my favourite there. Absolutely gorgeous. Cheers. I would have some music on at the moment, but I was worried I'd get um, caught out for copyright infringement and all that sort of stuff. Alright, I haven't used this food processor very much. I've had it a couple of years. But. So, what we've got to do now is grind. Let me just get me. I made, I made some notes after watching Tina's video. Um, about how to go about this. Right, it says grind nuts and granola in food processor. Right, so here we go. Top some. Let's go. <laughs> size there I think. Don't look too fine I wouldn't have thought. Right, so grind nuts and granola in food process put in a bowl. Right, got a bowl over here. Thank you. 
I'm going to do this over the sink so that I don't lose, get stuff all over the floor. So I'll be back in a minute. two-thirds cups of this lot. the mixed dried mixed fruit. served with antipasta as part of a tapas meal occasion. fingers. I've washed my hands. So in go one cup of fits. I think you can put in figs, dates, prunes, apricots, whatever takes your fancy really. Slightly over the I do my cooking, it's invariably by the seat of my pants. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But 
think working from a recipe to the nth degree takes a bit of fun out of it really, doesn't it? Right. Right, we've done we've got fruit in now. And what we're going to do is grind that lot up. very often but my god it's good. Well, this is a Maggi Mix Cuisine 4200XL System Automatic no less. Right so what we've got to do now you know as the man said or the lady said Add this until we get a stiff mix. Maybe it looks quite stiff to be honest. But we'll see. Give it another go. Is very stiff. What I think I might do is add a bit more fruit.
be honest, I might as well tip all the rest of the feet in as well. Say to your pants, which is how you learn. Put a drop of water in there, I think. Not too much of that. Not very good. Just a little bit. That's what I'll do. Don't know where Cedric is, he's fast asleep, I think. We went to the park today. And then um, we went into Maidstone, and at long last, I managed to buy myself a very nice pair, half price, pair of gloves, Carrymore Phantom, waterproof, windproof, you name it. Got it from Sports, uh, yeah, Sports Direct. I haven't put them to the test outside yet. Um, well, got, the, the gloves I've got already, um, they're not bad. They're made of this insulate material, but it's like this, like fleecy. And they're just, they're not really waterproof, and they're certainly not windproof. But my hands were freezing when we went for a walk out in the, what they call this at the moment? Mini beast from the east. So I bought these Carrymore ones. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to using them tomorrow. Having said that, having said that, now I've bought some nice warm winter gloves. I can guarantee from now on in there'll be a heat wave. Yeah, we'll be walking around in t-shirts. Won't rain, be no wind, anything like that. But as always next year. Right, onwards. powder or drinking chocolate. Now I didn't actually make a note from Tina's video on how much of that we ought to put in. Not a lot we can put. Wait 
Right. We're going to need a what? Tesco's in extra value, everyday value, instant hot chocolate. No artificial preservative flavours or colours. Mm. If you believe that, you believe anything. Right, spoon. make a note from Tina's video on how much of this you put in so what do we do? A couple of tablespoons that first. Tina did and made her version of this, the professional version of the thing, um, certainly compared to this. Uh, Tina had baking trays with individual compartments. Well, I haven't got any of those. I've got Yorkshire pudding trays, but I'm not sure they're the right thing. So, what I'm going to do is make, I'm try to just make a um, a slab of it, or two slabs, I think, because of the amount we've got here. Right, so I'm going to need to make a bit of room over here so you can see what I'm doing. Where's the cloth gone? There it is. Right, so give your machinery a bit of a wipe down. interested to know um, what the weather's like in your part of the country or part of the world. And hopefully this is a forecast for Cornwall, South West, Northern England, Scotland as usual. I've had the snow pretty bad. Right. So I've got to put it in a tray now. Right. I've got two trays ready, all in the preparation, you see, apparently. All in the preparation, you see. So, here we go. Now, I'm not quite 
sure what to do with it. Because the only trays that I've got, that one's quite deep. That isn't. Now let, let me have a look see how much mixture we've got. Because you've got to bear in mind that once I've transferred the mixture from here into the bar into the trays, I'm going to then got to put those in the fridge to chill them off. I'm not quite sure for how long. And then when that's done, I've got to cover them in melted dark chocolate. Which you do with a bain marie. Then put them back in the fridge to set. I think what I'm going to do is, just looking by the amount, and I'm going to go for the, the thick one. Executive decision made. Executive decision made. What I'm slightly concerned about is maybe they're not going to set. to the wall to the right, let's just get all the mixture out then no we'll mess about trying to get it into the tray into the tray properly Do not smell nice. Oops, that whatever that edge coming down. Get out. Get out. Hmm. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but Wetted the spoon. The blade out of this here. The other worry I've got is that this isn't going to set in the fridge and I'm going to end up with not a cereal bar but a no, no, what bar? Squiggy bar, squiggy rush. Not real for that here. It certainly tastes the figs in it. So oh, me. you uh, guys and girls out there I've also had a go at this 
interesting to see how you got on and what sort of ingredients you used, techniques and that sort of stuff. Always good to share ideas, experiences. Right. That's it all gone now, more or less. And that can go into the old dishwasher. Thank you, love it. Thank you, love it. I don't use mine very often. But when you need it, my God, it's a godsend, isn't it? Well, I haven't said that. Recently, I've, I've decided to start using it a bit more because I'm a bit worried that if I don't use it, the seals will start drying up and that sort of thing. So, right, here we go. Put it down. Definitely think this is going to be too thick. Mm. As a kid, when your mum baked cakes, made a cake mixture in a bowl, did you like licking it out? I certainly did. We don't seem to hear about that sort of stuff these days, do you? Maybe it's because I'm getting old. You know. Who knows? Right. Who then knows? Yeah, I think this might be a bit too thick. We will see. You live and learn, don't you? You live and learn. Well, if it doesn't set, I suppose I could have it like for. think I think it was a mistake putting the extra fruit in because I think that's made it too moist still Maybe some magic happens when it goes in the fridge. Right. What I think I'm going to do now, I think I will cover it. We'll put it in the fridge. Is stage one complete? Hmm. 
Gardens. The old chef working hard here. Right, so that's what it looks like now. Yeah, and I'm going to cover that with some more cling film. Give that a go. So, there you go, that's what it looks like now, so what I'm going to do now is to pop that in the fridge, I've got somewhere to put it, right, that'll do. This is where you don't want to drop it. Right, so in we go. In the fridge. What time is it now? Uh, quarter past two. So we'll leave that in there. I might leave it in there overnight actually and do the next bit of this video tomorrow because that's where um, I have to do the chocolate on the top. There's a quick view outside my back door down the garden. No snow. Bitterly cold out today, the wind. I say um, it's really what prompted me to go and get some new gloves. Because my hands were absolutely freezing. And there we go. Still got to get that fire pit going. Oh, that's a job task for another day. Maybe do that next week. Right. Okay then, I'll, I'll sign off for now and I'll bring you back in part two, which involves the chocolate. So, see you soon.